It is said that surprises are everywhere in life, and they usually come from misjudging people for being less than they appear. Be careful how you view or speak about others. In other words, never judge a book by its cover. Today, we look at mental health. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We have an interesting show lined up for you, so stay tuned. Motorists, when driving on the road, here are some simple reminders. Look out for and extend courtesy to all road users. Give plenty of room to pedestrians, especially in wet weather. Drive slowly. No bother wet them up. Slow down when approaching a pedestrian crossing or school and always be prepared to stop. Remember, a school zone is a 30-kilometer zone. Cut your speed. Drivers of large and slow-moving vehicles should always keep in the far left hand of a dual carriageway. Keep it simple. Drive left and pass right. These are just simple reminders of your road duties. Drive safely. By just looking at a person, can you tell that they are suffering from a mental illness or disorder? Many times it's difficult to know. Stress and many other factors can wreak havoc on the mind. Find out more next on Get the Facts as we tackle mental health with Dr. Kevin Goldberg. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. How much do you know about mental health? Can you identify if someone you know is experiencing a mental illness? Do you know the risk factors for mental health conditions? And even more significant, during this period, can the stress related to COVID-19 negatively impact one's mental health? Well, in today's program, we have the facts. Our source person is Dr. Kevin Goldburn, Director of Mental Health and Substance Abuse in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Dr. Goldburn, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ms. Campbell, for having me here. Okay, we want to start... At the very beginning, what is mental health? So mental health is a component of what health is. The World Health Organization has defined health as being a state of well-being, both mental, social, physical, and spiritual well-being, and not the mere absence of disease. So if someone, two brothers, managing each other for a long time, then their social well-being is not there. So we could say that they are not healthy. Now, mental health in particular now can be further defined as someone who is at a state where he or she can cope with the normal stress of life, can be productive in his or her community, and can establish meaningful relationship. So a person is functional because their mind is operating at a level to allow them to function well. How would you grade Jamaica as it relates to our mental health? Well, I think we're coming up far away because I have had in my clinical experience where a person actually come to my office inquiring about their, either their health status of themselves, their mental health status, or of some relative. So person are more willing to ask questions and to inquire about how they are doing because you know, the way they are feeling, the way they are behaving, and interacting with others. However, there's still a single amount of stigma attached to mental illness and they can even medication because some persons will take the counseling, but if you prescribe to them medication, they say they don't take any madman pills. So there's a stigma attached still that we are still trying to work on. Right. So are we good, are we doing good or not, as it relates to our entire well-being mentally? I think we are doing better than before. Yes, I think we are doing better than before, definitely. Yes, yes. Okay, can you uh, tell us now about some, some of the symptoms of a mental illness, especially we look at children first and then adults. Children can present with some of the symptoms that adults present with, like you may have mood changes, a child may be crying a lot, or a child may become irritable. There may be also sleep disturbances, and there may be also be behavioral changes. When children find you have more behavioral change, a child may be still playing, but yet he or she fights a lot, so get into a lot of fights with others. Or you may see a change in their social interaction, where they may either become very clinging to their parents if they're fearful, or they may become withdrawn. Another important sign to look for is actually their performance at school. So a child may be doing fairly well in school, and then we notice that a drop in his grades or her grades, and then we understand that that child may be having some mental health issues, 
as reflecting in the academic performance. So what, what does a parent do in that instance? In that instance, the parent will have to speak to the teacher to find what's happening in school, because sometimes in the school room, which is more structured, they may see a change in what the child is doing, whether the child's interaction in class, interaction with his or her peers, and general even behavior on the play field. Your child used to be very playful, no longer goes out to play. So one way is found from the parent, from teachers, what's have been happening. Also, if there's a negative report that there's some changes, then they can seek help by taking this child to a counselor. We actually have child guidance clinics, which are run by our psychologists, psychiatrists, I mean the officers who are especially trained nurses who actually can do an assessment from what's happening. Is it a mental issue? Is it a learning problem? And do the necessary assessment and make the necessary intervention. All right, so these clinics are, 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 are for free? Do we have to pay? Yes, they're free. There are about over 20 child and adults in mental clinics across the length and breadth of Jamaica. Okay. All right, what are some of the what are some of the, the illnesses that children are diagnosed with as a result of a failing mental health? Well, believe it or not, children are diagnosed with depression. They may have depression, we have excessive sadness, lack of interest in usually enjoyable activities. They may have anxiety, where find the child is maybe irritable, not sleeping well. Child may actually have a regression in his or her development, so a child who probably at past bedwetting stage may have a regression where he or she start bedwetting again and those may be early signs that the child is having some mental issues and manifest it not only in behavioral um, means but also in also in physical manifestations of it as well. All right so that's depression any other? And then there's well attention deficit hyperactive disorder a fairly common one that you may see in children where about five six years old where it is noted that this child is doesn't pay attention for long. The child always seems to be fidgety, interrupts other children. The child, whenever he or she is going about whatever they're doing, they don't walk, they run. They tend to can't wait their turns in class when she asks a question, say, me, miss, me, miss, and I want to answer before other persons. And in fact, they don't finish tasks, whether it is both at home or classwork, they start and they stop because they can't maintain that attention. For any long period of time. Yes. We tend to think that AD and D though is something that is that is really not a Jamaican thing. Most of those are those illnesses occur in people who live elsewhere. How do you respond to that? No, it's very present in Jamaica because we do have persons who definitely have it. And when they are put on medication plus having environmental changes, they see significant improvement. And just from the parents, you know, they really have it because parents really find very difficult to manage them when they are having the symptoms and they're not able to slow down, do things at a relatively good pace, complete the task and, and learn at school because it affect their learning too because they, they can't pay attention long enough. They don't concentrate long enough. They don't do classwork, they start and finish. They tend not to do very well, and not do well in exams too. We're gonna take a break now when we come back with more discussion on mental health. Properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We're talking mental health in today's program. Our guest is Dr. Kevin Goldburn, Director of Mental Health and Substance Abuse in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. So, Doc, we were talking about children in the first segment. I want to continue with the children. What kind of impact do you think with the whole idea of staying inside? What kind of impact has that had, if any, on our children? 
where our children are a bit confused by it, especially depending on the age of the child, because he or she is used to going to school, even in kindergarten, and they use that interaction. I know a child who, when was told that there will be no more school as of tomorrow, she began to mourn about it and said she doesn't want to go home because she wants to miss her friends and her teachers and so on. So it definitely an impact on them in that they don't understand. And furthermore, what happens to them is that they may start having behavioral issues because they want to go to school, their parents are not allowed to go to school, they have temper tantrums, they may become very irritable, they may have regression in their development, they may have bedwetting and they may have issues with eating. Yes, so they're still at home because the school is still out for, for the younger children. What can we do as parents at home? What should we as do? As parents? Yes. Yeah, so we should, first of all, explain to the child, according to the child's age, what is happening, why this restriction and movement and staying at home is important. Two, to try as much as possible maintain some sort of structure to the day. So in the morning, they should still get up, have a bath, to put on some change from the night clothes or day clothes, have the breakfast and have some interaction time with whether it's going to be the tablet or with some other device, a break time, lunch time, and also as much as possible to interact with the child, to ensure the child have some kind of semblance of some structure as they would have had when they go to school. It won't be the same, but it will be something that will occupy them and they'll feel less distressed by not being at school. The other thing can also be trying to get them to be in contact with their friends over the phone and so on. So yes, they might not see them to touch them, but even to speak to them on the phone, it will help them a lot to somewhat maintain a sort of connectiveness with their friends and even relatives. The pandemic has also caused some problems, mental issues with adults as well, yes? Because people have lost their jobs, people are, have um, um, failing health. What, what have you see? Are you seeing more people now with mental illness since since COVID nineteen? Yes, because we actually have a helpline where we are getting calls through these helplines, and even through the Ministry of Health COVID lines, a lot of calls are coming in where persons are expressing concerns about symptoms they're having, are they having COVID or not? They are worried about um, how it's going to impact on them. They're losing jobs or losing income stream. How are they going to manage? Not too sure how long it's going to last. I find persons who have had previous illnesses like anxiety and depression, those may be getting worse. As so persons who never had illnesses, they find that a lot of people become anxiety disorders, persons have become very fearful. So it has affected persons quite significantly. We talk a lot about anxiety and stress in, in, in um, nowadays. Tell me, what are some of the symptoms of someone who is experiencing anxiety issues? Persons who are very anxious will tend to have a difficulty concentrating on any activity may become very restless. So if he or she is in a space, maybe pacing up and down, the person may have difficulty doing any task at all. May start and start and stop, start and stop. The person may have been sleeping issues where they find either difficult to fall asleep or interrupt the sleep all through the nights. And this person may also become quite pitiable as well. You know, they become a bit short tempered. Whenever someone says something to them, they might get very irritable in their response. So it affects them a lot. And persons who are anxious sometimes also become depressed because they realize that they're not behaving as yourself. They also may become depressed with time as well. So anxiety and depression tend to work hand in hand. Oh, so we talked about anxiety, we talked about depression, we talked about AD and D. What other Ill mental illnesses we, uh, we we are seeing in Jamaica? Well, we have some persons who will also have what we call psychotic illnesses. And by psychosis, we mean that person may have a loss of their perception of reality. So the person may become so anxious, reach a point where he or she is experiencing things which are not in keeping with reality. So they become very fearful that somehow someone is going to hurt them, or they are going to be um, somehow they're going to get the disease and it's going to affect them, even though they have any symptoms. And they have these beliefs which are not in keeping with what is real, but for them it seems very real to them because they are so nervous. They reach a point where they actually become confused. And restless, you know, to run away, they do different things. We sure when you're looking on, it will be like a bizarre behavior. Yes. Do mental illness ever go away, Doc, or 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 by themselves, or you really need to treat them? So it depends on the severity. Because some mental illness, if it's mild and it is caught early enough with some sort of support from family and from friends and so on, the person can recover and be okay for the rest of their life. 
In some instances, even we have intervention from the psychologists and psychiatrists, we have some instances which are time limited. Because you may have what we call nervous breakdown, because you get a shock from a situation, traumatic situation, a, a, a financial situation which was unexpected. Because you may become sick for a short while, and with treatment and counseling, a person can get better and remain better for the rest of their life. Even some cases of depression, because it may be treated adequately, and the first episode of depression, and you remain okay thereafter. So it's not always a permanent condition. Are there stages of mental illnesses? Yes, so there's a mild stage, a moderate and severe stage. So in the mild stage, person may still be able to function. The person still able to go to work and still able to do some other work. But as it gets progressively worse, you see a more presenteeism, person at work, but not producing as much as they used to produce. When we the severe stage, you now most persons will recognize that something is wrong. Person themselves might realize something is wrong, but then the functions are affected. Whether it's a relationship, ability to do their own domestic chores or their academics or work situation will be suffering as a result of the severe, severity of the illness. How does the Ministry of Health and Wellness support people who have mental illnesses? So we, we, have, we support in different ways. So we have over 150 clinics across the island. We just start by psychiatrists, psychologists, social worker, and mental health officers, just special trained nurses. And what we do, we try and provide the holistic care for patients who may have mental issues. I realize medication is not the only thing they may need. They may need to have some counseling, which is where psychologists come in to provide some counseling to the persons to deal with problems and learn new problem skills, new coping skills. Even the, some aspects of relationships at home in which a social worker can help to work out the home situation, which may be a contributing factor to the person becoming mentally ill. And we also have what we call a helpline, which I mentioned earlier, which is a very important tool because we realize that a person may be suffering silently from anxiety and depression because a lot of times one can mask the symptoms of these things and they get very severe. So we have this helpline where a person can call and speak to our psychologist, and it's available 24 hours, seven days per week, and it's free of cost. And person can call, and person can get initial counseling, help them to deal with whatever concerns they have, and where necessary, they are referred for further therapy. Okay, before we go, one last question. Tell us about, talk to the community about the treatment of people who are mentally ill. So the treatment of mental ill starts with the community, because the more we are supportive, Persons who are mentally ill and don't stigmatize them, realize that they, what they're having is what anybody can have, then it makes a great difference. So being supportive in community is very important. Person can be treated adequately and return to normal functioning. And that's important to me because sometimes when persons have a nervous breakdown or mental illness, a lot of times when it's schools or workplace don't want to have them back. It's important that a person can get better and function well like anybody else. And they should be welcome back into their workplace and their school. Because by doing that, you allow them to become productive, improve their self-esteem, their quality of life, and then that will become less of a burden in society because now they are contributing to society. So it's important for us to realize that there is no good health without good mental health. And when we support persons, it makes a great difference. So we want a supportive community, we are more understanding, more willing to listen to persons because sometimes persons' illnesses develop from early and a person will listen to persons and provide support, it won't reach a stage where they decompensate and need to get more drastic treatment to bring them back to a sense of stability. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest was Dr. Kevin Goldburn, who is the Director of Mental Health and Substance Abuse in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Mental illness can affect just about anyone and its impact can vary from person to person. Unexpected factors such as COVID-19, job loss, the death of a loved one can trigger mental illnesses. So let's be more tolerant and understanding of those around us experiencing such issues. If you or someone you know is suffering from mental health issues, seek help today. It can be treated. Until next time, when Get the Facts brings you, as always, more pertinent and important information. I'm Enthros Campbell. Thanks for watching and take good care. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. 
protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. Up next, highlights of last year's Health Research Conference. The universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. The National Health Research Conference is a reflection of those who are already sharpening their wits. So research is about look, looking at what we're doing and coming up with ways to improve our value and performance. 2019 saw to the Ministry of Health and Wellness celebrating their 10th year hosting the National Health Research Conference. The platform provides individuals and groups with the opportunity to design and conduct health research to provide evidence to guide policy and practice. This research conference forms part of our core work. Quality research allows us to drive continuous improvements and access quality health services. Our commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals and the realization of universal health require and demand this. The two-day conference explored developments in mental health, sickle cell disease, advances in medicine, nutrition, and best practices in health. Several speakers also presented their findings into research on non-communicable diseases. There's no greater challenge that we face in this country, from a public health perspective, than the challenge of our non-communicable diseases. Again, the data is very clear. That's what takes us into very challenging waters as individuals in terms of one ailment or another, cardiovascular disease, cancers, and I could go on, or collectively as a family, as a community, and as a country. That is a big challenge. One in three Jamaicans are hypertensive. One in eight living with diabetes, one in two, two overweight or obese. And we could go on in terms of that data. So like uh, Dr. Tufton already said, I think hypertension diabetes is one of the global problems facing everybody, not just uh, in the Caribbean, so in just Jamaica. And in 2017, more than 400 million people globally had this chronic disease. And it costs around an average of 65 million in Latin America and the Caribbean, economically. And in Jamaica, almost 200,000 people have type 2 diabetes. Samuel Owusu's research focused on common alternative therapy used by people with chronic non-communicable diseases. So what is a complementary uh, alternative medicine? It's a practice, knowledge, or belief that incorporates plant, animal, mineral-based medicine, spiritual therapies, exercise, and manual techniques to treat their diseases. And in just Jamaica, almost 8,000 medicinal treatments, including 700 vitamins and 60 herbal remedies are registered in Jamaica. So what was the, um, our objective for this study? Our objective was to find people who used common alternative therapies for treatment in Western Jamaica. So four parishes in Western Jamaica was our main focus. And to also examine the prevalence and predictors of calm usage among people with hypertension type 2 diabetes. The study revealed that persons diagnosed with hypertension used common alternative therapy such as herbal medications, diet modification, and exercise. They also used nutritional supplements such as vitamins and practiced relaxation techniques. Similarly, persons with diabetes practiced changing their diet, including reducing oil and salt intake, using relaxation techniques, exercising, and spiritual healing. Delving further, he shared the herbs that people were using for common alternative therapy. For hypertension, of significant use was garlic, soursop, circe, and guinea hen weed. Persons with diabetes also used circe, bell pepper, coconut water, and king of the forest. We concluded that a high, uh, high percentage of people use complementary uh, medicine in the western part of Jamaica to treat their hypertension and type 2 diabetes. And most of the people did not discuss this with their um, healthcare providers. They can use this resource to design patient educational intervention to ensure proper use and mitigation of harmful effects 
of monotherapy medicine. And how can we do this? We can do this by integrating camp usage into the medical curriculum. We can also encourage uh, physicians to talk to their patients about common alternative treatment use. And we can also tell our patients to be more honest about their common alternative treatment use because it can be either helpful or harmful for them. That's why events of this kind are so important because it is a focus on the challenges we face. It is a dissecting of that challenge or those challenges and it is an attempt at coming up and improved ways, solutions to taking on those challenges. You've asked for it, and now it's here. The Jamaica Information Service has updated its mobile app. It's easier to navigate, loads even faster than before, talking about top speed, operates seamlessly across platforms, and we're a creative bunch, so it's much easier on the eyes. Now you have quick and easy access to new stories, television and radio features, and a variety of photos right at your fingertips. And you'll get push notifications when new content is uploaded. Download the app on your Apple and Android devices now and get news you can use. Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica on the go. Insurance is one of those things you don't really think about until you actually need it. It's like having a spare key to your home or car or given today's pandemic, traveling with a mask. From car insurance to health insurance, life insurance, home insurance, and more, these policies offer you a layer of protection which will help to guard you from some harsh realities that may occur. So here's what you're going to do come tomorrow. Pick up the phone and make that call. Find out the costs and benefits of different insurance schemes and select the one that is right for you and your family. Protect yourself, your family, and your property as we aim to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. If you've been in contact with a person confirmed with or suspected of having COVID-19 and is now feeling sick or displaying symptoms of coughing, sneezing, runny nose, sore throat, fever or difficulty breathing, here is what you need to do. Self-isolate. Stay at home and call or ask someone to contact the Ministry of Health and Wellness through one of its COVID-19 helplines. Follow the Health Ministry's instructions. Numbers to call are 888-754-7792 or 888-1LOVE, that is 888-663-5683. Additional numbers to call are 876-542-5998, 876-542-6007 and 876-542-6006. If you are sick, don't create the chance for infection spread by going out in public spaces, using public transport or just turning up at the doctor or hospital. Do your part to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll do this all over again. Until then, send your feedback on today's show to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Also, follow us on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can download our app on your Apple and Android devices, and you can also visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.